one. Okay, so my name is Dina Abello, and I'm here to discuss the killing of my husband, James Napier, um, by the Haywood and Bar Police. May 23rd, 2014, he was pulled over for driving goofy um, on Mission Boulevard at the Kmart parking lot. He pulled over. Um, several police officers arrived, and by the time he got out of his car to do a sobriety check, um, we lost count. About 17 police officers were there. There was video cameras. It was all recorded by four different angles, four different cameras, and he was wrestled to the ground. He um, was given, um, he was tased three times. He was um, basically dogpiled on for about 10 minutes. They tied him up, they tased him, he was unconscious. They continued to, to tie him up after he was unconscious. And they let him sit to the side for seven minutes before any medical assistance was given by themselves um, or the paramedics. So he sat there dying while they made jokes about him. They talked about him, um, his ring, he lost the ring in the struggle, and they said it was a mood ring, and they wanted to see what kind of mood he was in. Uh, an officer said it was heavy. And um, after that, the ambulance came and took him. It took me about 18 months to watch the video. We, re we received it initially when it happened, but I couldn't get myself to watch it, and once I did see it, I realized it needed to come out to the public and people need to see what the police were about and they need to be held accountable. So since we did release it about a month and a half ago, um, we went on Facebook, released a video, we've had a rally, we're having a um, March, June 24th in Hayward at the police department. And um, I've contacted the district attorney about some changes that need to be made um, as far as the reporting. And um, I've recently heard back from her, so I mean, that's where we're at now. In, in Alameda County, they um, don't have to report any, any custody deaths unless it's involved with the firearm, and he was tased and not shot. So basically, the district attorney wasn't aware of what happened. So I have wrote her several messages, emails, and stuff to have that policy changed. And I heard back from her recently, and she said she was looking into changing that policy. So. Mm. Beautiful. Okay, any questions for Dina from our beautiful group? Any questions? Um, yeah. How do you have the strength to just be here and talk in that way? That that's so amazing. Um, the first year and a half, I basically stayed in bed with a blanket over my head. I didn't do anything. Um, and I guess that's just the process I needed to take. Um, if I would have released a video, then I probably wouldn't have been able to do what I'm doing now. Um, I've seen the video the first time. I it was really tough watching what happened. I was there were so many different things that went wrong in the in the process of watching the video. Um, I like lost it, you know. But after that, I started to watch it again just to investigate and um, try to see what went wrong. And I was taking notes and everything, so I kind of changed gears a little bit. Um, and my my main goal now is just justice. They need to be held accountable. But there was no policy written to hold them accountable too. So I had to start there. I wanted to work with the district attorney and say, okay, this needs to be changed, therefore now we can hold these people accountable. Because it's not the only person that it's happened to in Hayward, and it's not gonna be the last unless something changes. So my my shift went into fight mode. And and to you know to get justice for him and to change it so it doesn't keep happening. They found a loophole, they capitalize off the fact that they know they don't have to report it if they don't shoot them. So they sh kill people, they got to couple other people um, the same way and since there wasn't a firearm they didn't have to know fire so I let the district attorney know that and um, hopefully they do make that change so it doesn't